Hello friends, I hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to talk about theology and Jesus and the phrase that I hear often, which is, I don't need theology, I have Jesus. And we're gonna talk about why that could actually be very dangerous. So before I start, I'm Emily and I create Christ-centered conversations about topics missing from mainstream messages. So if that's your cup of tea, make sure to subscribe and let's get into the video. So when people say, I don't need theology, I have Jesus, let's just be clear. We all have a theology. Theology is just the study of God. It's our understanding of God. And we should want to have a good understanding of God. It's not wrong to study theology. I don't think we should look at people who study theology as like, uh, they're just intellectuals. Like, you know, theology is for the intellectual people. I'm more of an experiential person, so I'm just going to pray. The intellectual people need to pray too, don't get me wrong. But today we're speaking about theology and why it's so important. Because the thing is, whether you can articulate it or not, you have beliefs and you have a theology. Now let's just be clear. You don't need to have a perfect theology in order to be saved and nobody will have a perfect theology to be saved. To be saved, all you need is to know your sin and to know Jesus as your savior. That's it. But once you're saved, you can know God and you can learn more about him. And he is so, intricate and so complex that we will never, literally ever, understand everything about God. And that's good and that's okay. If we could understand him, he would be like us. And we don't want to serve a God who is understandable. We should want to serve a God who's complex and who is unknowable, but still reveals himself. And he reveals himself through scripture and through nature. So through the world around us and through the world word that he has given us. And so people have studied so much about who God is and what his character is like based on his word and based on the world around us. And so we can read these people, they're called theologians, and we can figure out, do I agree? Do I disagree? What do I see in scripture and stuff like that? And if we don't do that, we still have a theology. It's not, it's just not being shaped by scripture. It's being shaped by maybe our experiences or it's being shaped by what we want. I want God to be like this. And so therefore he is. And you might not say it like that, but if we don't study, if we don't look into the scriptures and say, who is God? Who is Jesus? How do I know him? And wrestle with deep questions like this, we might be pulled into really dangerous beliefs. Like God is just the big guy upstairs and I don't really need to honor or worship him because, you know, he's cool. He's chill. He's my friend. Or we could get pulled into theology of God doesn't care about me. He is so distant and he is not personal because he's so big and he's so wrathful and he's so powerful that why would he look at me? Why would he want me? Why would he love me? So he doesn't, he doesn't really care about what I do. He's not personal. And these are dangerous beliefs. And so if we don't look at scripture and we don't see who is God actually, and we don't develop a theology, we're going to fall into these other theologies. Remember, they're still theologies. You can't not have theology. Because just saying like, I have Jesus, doesn't cut it. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? I mean, you could say, I have Jesus, but what if your Jesus looks different from the Jesus that is seen in scripture? Or the Jesus that is dwelling at the right hand of the Father in heaven right now? God is awesome. He deserves to be known. He deserves to be studied. We should desire to know him better. Now let's talk about more controversial theology. So for me, I'm Calvinist. I consider myself reformed and I hold to the reformed doctrines of grace, which are total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. And so that's not all of my theology, but those are some of the things that I believe in. It's part of what I hold to. It's not all of it, but it's part of it. And I can succinctly say that and so I'm like, okay, that's what I believe. But if you don't believe that, that doesn't mean you're wrong. But I'm not going to say you have to hold to these things also. I'm just going to say, do you see your theology in scripture? I see my theology in scripture and that's part of the reason why I believe it. I think there's a lot of basis for it. Is your theology found in scripture? Are the things that you believe in God, are they backed up by what scripture says? Are they consistent with God's character? If they are, awesome. Does your theology make you love God more? So when I think about this idea of the perseverance of the saints, the idea that God, who is loving and kind, but also is holy, chooses to hold on to us, that he says, I love you too much. You would fall away on your own. I will hold on to you. I will keep you until the day where we are fully redeemed. For your, once you are saved, 
you are saved. Because if it wasn't for God, we would fall away. And that's my belief and that's my understanding. And that makes me go, wow, what a merciful God. How much he must love me to preserve me. And you could do this on the other side too. You could say, wow, God is so good and he has given me free will. So therefore I will wake up and I will love him and I will choose to love him and I will choose to put effort in to love him more because God has given me the free will and he must love me so much that he would give me free will and let me choose him and let me love him. So does your theology make you love Jesus more? Because if it doesn't, it's just intellectualized. It's just in your head. Or you maybe you don't even believe it. Maybe you say you believe it, but you don't actually. The other thing about theology is that it always impacts how we live. If it's not impacting how you live, you probably don't believe it as much as you think you do. You could take this any way. If you have the theology that says, I believe that God has saved me and redeemed me and he will hold me and keep me, that's what I believe. I can't fall away. I will live my life in confidence, knowing that God is the one who holds on to me. That even in the depth of my sin, God has loved me and chose me. And that spurs me on to love. That makes me want to say, oh my gosh, I just want to love God even more. So I will do things that are in line with that. But if I say, my theology is, God doesn't care about the things that I do. He doesn't care about my sin. I will continue to sin. That will be the outpouring of that theology in my life. That will be the direct result. If the things I believe are that God doesn't care about my sin, then in my life, I'm just going to keep sinning because God doesn't care about my sin. So we need to make sure that we have good theology because it will inherently impact what our day-to-day -day lives are like. So yes, in order to be saved, we just need Jesus. But once you are saved, you have the freedom to know God, to learn more about him. So search the scripture, read things, and think, what do I believe? Who is God? How does this theology make me love him better? How does this theology, now that I'm loving him better, make me love other people better? How does it impact my life? So as long as your theology is based in scripture, makes you love God more, and makes you love people more, that's awesome. But if your theology does not do that, if your theology is purely intellectual and does not make you love God better, you need better theology. If your theology does not have any substantial evidence in scripture, it's just something that you believe about God or you want him to be this way, search the scripture and say, is this true? Is this actually who God is? Because we don't want to worship a God who's just made up in our minds. We want to worship the true living God. We do that by searching the scripture and saying, what does scripture actually say? And then we love God and then we love people and everything works out awesome. That's not entirely true all the time, but you know what I mean? So be wary of the phrase, I don't need theology, I have Jesus, because you do have a theology and that theology dictates who Jesus is to you. So you can say, I have Jesus, but what does that even mean? How do you even know who Jesus is? That's something that, especially for people who have the ability, and not everyone will have the ability to research and study and, and learn in the way that I can and some of my friends can simply because we go to a Christian school and we can study these things. Not everyone has that ability. Some people, for example, are being persecuted because of their faith. Their lives are on the line because of their faith and they have Jesus and they may not have a perfect theology because maybe they don't have the resources, but they're growing in faith and God is using them and developing them and that is awesome. I'm speaking specifically to people who say, I could study, but I'm not going to because I don't need theology. I have Jesus. Make sure you know what Jesus you have. And that is your theology. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe boop, and click on all these other videos because they're cool too. I made them. <laughs> and have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful life.